Hundreds of people have attended a memorial service marking the loss of three Royal Navy ships at the start of the First World War. 1,459 crewmen died when the three cruisers were sunk by a German U-boat off the Dutch coast in 1914. Simon Newton reports from Chatham Historic Dockyard. It's among the darkest days of Royal Naval history, the loss of nearly 1,500 men to a single submarine. A hundred years ago to the day since the sinking of HMS Abukir, Hogue and Cressy, hundreds of those sailors' relatives gathered at Chatham Historic Dockyard. Its huge expanse filled with the sound of remembrance. Abukir, Hogue and Cressy were Chatham Division cruisers. Nearly all the men on board came from the Chatham Port Division. But even by 1914 standards, they were slow and ill-armed and easy pickings for Germany's deadly U-boats. For the Royal Navy, the sinking of those three cruisers was a major wake-up call to what was then the new threat of submarine warfare, that a single German U-boat manned by just 29 submariners could, in a single engagement, kill nearly 1,500 Royal Navy seamen. Pat Whitbread's grandfather, John Deere, served aboard HMS Hogue. He survived the sinking but never spoke about what happened. I actually lived with my grandparents for a time. I've got very strong memories of him and um, I want those memories to, to go on. Um, this is... sorry. <laughs> To mark the commemoration, the Duke of Kent unveiled a plaque in honour of the fallen. 1,459 poppy petals, one for every man lost, cascading from the ceiling. Roger Holmes' grandfather served aboard HMS Cressy. He sent his family this postcard from the ship. Despite being below deck when she was torpedoed, he too was one of the lucky ones. The torpedo hit the ship very early in the morning and I, I believe after it sank very, very quickly as did all the other ships. And he was in the water, I believe, half naked for over three hours. He says in his account he wasn't a very good swimmer, but luckily he clung, clung to a piece of wood and managed to stay afloat. To mark the part played by Dutch merchant ships in rescuing survivors, the mayor of Medway handed a wreath to the mayor of The Hague before the first Sea Lord took the salute as the band of the Royal Marines beat retreat. The connection between Chatham, the Chatham Division, the dockyard, the people of Kent and the ships makes it very personal. And that's where the memory becomes most acute. It is, after all, only just a generation and a half ago. So the personal nature of the loss is still felt. Of the 2,250 men who set sail that day, only 791 survived. For the Royal Navy, it marked the moment maritime warfare changed forever. For Chatham and these families, a loss they mourn to this day. Simon Newton, Forces News, Chatham in Kent.